Thank you, praise team and choir. And Jesus, you're the center of it all. Amen. That's really what it's supposed to be about, isn't it? Amen. As we're here on this Memorial Day. I know you're talking about and you're thinking right now. Preacher, have you gone nuts? Yeah, go ahead, kids. You're supposed to go ahead and go out. You guys all got it down. I never have to say it. There's none of you want to stay in here for this. So. <laughs> Whoop, a late one. All right. Good to see all those children here and running back to be in children's church. And uh, we just praise God for them and those of you who bring them. And so, as we're talking about Memorial Day and talking about fishers and men, you're going to say, how are you going to tie those together? Just give me a little bit, okay? And we'll tie that together. And, uh, but first of all today, I'd like to know how many have lost someone, a loved one in the military, if you just raise your hand. All right? And they're all over the place. Uh, Nadine and I lost our brother in Vietnam. And uh, he was seven years older than I was. And I was 13 when he was killed in Vietnam. And he was the guy I looked up to. Uh, he was the honoriest one in our family. I tried to follow his footsteps. My sister Nadine and Daryl were the saints of the family. My little brother, I haven't figured out what he was yet. But uh, something in between. And I just want to know who here served during World War II in the military, if you would stand up. All right, anybody? I know we're getting where there's less and less. All right, brother, thank you. All right. Praise God. All right, how about the Korean War? Anybody here served in the Korean War, during the Korean War? Praise God. All right. Three, three or four of those. All right. How about Vietnam? All right. Got a lot of them. Some served in both. Praise God. Thank you. Now, to make it easier, or we'll be here a long time, who served in everything since Desert Storm, Desert Shield, and up to date? All right. If you would stand. All right. I want to thank you all. And we know this church is a rich church when it comes to military and those who have either went to war or been willing to go to war, who have had loved ones that have died or other ones that they know have died and friends that have died but been willing to die their self for our country. And that's the reason today we can stand as we are right now and preach the gospel and not be afraid of anything. And uh, I thank the Lord for that freedom. And so I know that we use Memorial Day now to either, even it's a lot of times when we go to the cemetery and the ones we love that have gone on before us. And there's nothing wrong with that either. But I truly appreciate those that are willing to give their lives for our country that we might be free today. Matter of fact, we're free enough that there's some people that I would, I don't want to use words that are negative, but most little kids went out. I'm just going to say, we have some real idiots out there speaking today, and they have the freedom to speak that way. I don't like what they say, don't get me wrong, and it's unbiblical, and there are a bunch of unbiblical people out there talking all the time, but the freedom they have is because of the ones that we're willing to serve. And, and I, I do acknowledge that freedom, and I love that we have that freedom. I just wish we'd have been bringing people up smarter than what we have, all right? And uh, I'm sorry if that offends you. I hope you're not on that side of the fence, all right? And uh, today as we look into God's Word, we're going to be looking about fishers of men. And I'm going I'm to tie this in because I believe one of the ways we combat some of the dumb things that are going on in the media today is get more people to come to Jesus. You see, the more people that come to Jesus, the more people understand the Word of God and who we should be in Christ. And the more people that understand and have a knowledge of Christ and are going to spend eternity in heaven, this old world will start turning around. But the problem is we haven't been winning the world. Well. All right, so we're going to look at this passage. There are several things that we can take out of this passage today. And we're going to look at hopefully all of them. So we're going to start out in Luke, the fifth chapter, starting with verse 1. In verse 1 it says, One day as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, great 
crowds pressed in on, on him to listen to the word of God. Don't you wish today that people would press in to listen to the word of God? Amen. Don't you wish today that people would get excited about the word of God? I know some of you there are thinking, well, you're no Jesus pastor, so don't expect him to do that, all right? And you're right about that. I'm not. But I just wish that we had enough love, that other people had enough love, that they would love hearing the word of God. And they would press in from everywhere to hear and listen and apply the word of God in their lives. He noticed two empty boats at the water's edge. For the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, its owner, to push it out into the water. So he sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. Okay, they were pushing him. I believe they were getting so close to hear what he had to say that he was backing up and backing up and finally at the water's edge. And, he, and Christ thinks, I'll get into the boat. He had Simon Peter push him out just a little bit and he sat in the boat. Could you imagine what all those church people said when he was so lazy he sat down and taught them in the boat? I mean, really? Could you think about that? Man, if that was a bunch of church people, they'd all say, well, that's just ungodly. I've never seen that before. Jesus sat in the boat and taught from the boat. It doesn't matter if you're standing, standing on your head, if you're sitting, as long as you're proclaiming the, the word of God, you and I are going to be okay, all right? So let's don't worry about how things are done near as much as what's being done. All right, so he sits in the boat and he's talking to the crowd. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, now go out where it is deeper and let down your net and catch some fish. All right, let's see. Master Simon replied, we worked hard all night, all last night, and didn't catch a thing. He didn't even tell a fisherman's lie. It was all catch and release. So we let him go. No, it was his livelihood. But if you say, go, I'll let the nets down again. Now, I want to I put myself in Simon Peter's place at that time. I believe, first of all, when a fisherman that makes a living at fishing, and that's his livelihood, his job, I have a great friend that has always said, you can't beat a man at his own profession. And if you do, he needs to quit. All right. He was an excavator, and once in a while he was in our church, and once in a while I'd go out with him, and I'd use the caterpillars, and and things that he owned, excavators and stuff. And on the caterpillar, I tried to smooth things off. It'd take me five times longer than it took him, and it still looked bad. And, uh, you know, I, I would back drag that stuff, and I'd make it look what, as the best I could. As soon as I got off, he'd jump on, and 15 minutes later, he actually made it look good. And I'd always say, how in the world do you do that? And he said, well, you need to think about it like this. I've been doing this about 40 years. He says, if I can get up and preach better than you can, you better quit. And if you can do better than I can on that machine, I'm going to quit. So here I think about Simon Peter. Simon Peter's a fisherman. That's what he does. Matter of fact, if I was Simon Peter, I'd, I'd have been down there talking under my breath. Probably out loud, but under my breath. Lord, I just told you we went out there all night long. I know how to fish. Nobody can tell me how to fish. And that's one of the problems that all of us have. We don't think anybody can tell us anything. He said, if I was him, I'd have been saying, Lord, I know how to fish. Matter of fact, I just got these nets done. And after working all night, all of last night, and taking all the time to mend the nets, you're wanting me to go back out there and I'll have to mend them again when I come back. You want me to load these up, go out to the same place I've been where nothing was caught and lower the nets. He says, but if you say so, 
I'll let the nets down again. Now, can you imagine Simon Peter? What if you'd have been him? All the way out there rowing that boat. This is useless. Makes no sense. Spent all night out there. Everybody knows the fish bite better at night. I know where all the spots are. I've been on this, in this fishing place most of my life. I know where the fish go. I know what time they're there. I know how the waters are. I know how the sky is. I know everything about it. And now you're making me go back out there. And the only reason I'm doing it is because you asked me to. Folks, I want to tell you, there's something we can learn about this passage is this. No matter what you and I think, if God says to, you and I need to be obedient and do it. It doesn't matter how much you think you know. What matters is who you know. We go on. Whoop! I, can you back me up to six there, I think? Did I do that? I certainly did. All right, thank you. And this time their nets were so full of fish they began to tear. Now they just mended them. It wasn't that they weren't in good shape. They were prepared to go out again. Not that day but they were prepared. And when they got out there God's word says they lowered those nets and when they lowered those nets the nets were so full they began to tear. Don't you wish in the things in our life when we were obedient to God and totally obedient with our lives and we do what God tells us to do, we would see the net so full that they would be about to tear. You see, that's what it's all about, being obedient to God that we might do what God would have us to do. A shout for help brought their partners in the other boat. And soon both boats were filled with the fish and on the verge of sinking. I want to tell you when God blesses, God blesses overflowingly. When God blesses, he blesses you enough that people around you get the blessings too. You see, the thing we have to realize, God wants to bless us, but why can't he? Because many of us won't be obedient to him. I praise God for those that are going out and knocking on doors right now. From a report I've even heard this week, there's been a couple hundred doors probably knocked on from people in this church this week. And if you've got one of those maps and haven't started, get started. All right, knock on people's door and invite them to come to church. Invite them to look up the church. Invite them to Jesus. Because that's the answer to all things. And as I mentioned in the beginning, when you and I finally understand and people start coming to know Christ as Lord and Savior, you and I are going to win the war against everything out there that is not of God. In a lot of areas we're losing it because Christians haven't stood up for too long. Verse 8 it says, when Simon Peter realized what had happened, he fell to his knees before Jesus and said, Oh Lord, please leave me. I'm too much of a sinner to be around you. Oh, what a realization. Have you ever felt down before the Lord and said, Lord, I don't have a right to be in your presence. Oh, Lord, I, my life is so messed up. I don't know why you would ever want to be around me. I want to tell you these are the people that Jesus died for. These are the ones that he died on the cross of Mount Calvary that we might be saved. And when we understand it, we'll understand that none of us deserve it. It is a gift from God. And God gave his son to die on that cross of Mount Calvary so that you and I might be free. And we're free, and we're free indeed to do whatever God has called us to do. The problem is, are we doing the calling of God in our life today? The problem is, are you and I stepping up today and saying, God, whatever you ask me to, even if I think I know more than you, I'll do it, O oh Lord, because I know you are God. You see, that's what it's all about. Simon Peter the fisherman knew how to fish. It wasn't that God taught him how to fish. God took him where to fish. Yeah. What you and I need to realize, 
We have mouths that can speak. But what we need to learn, we need to learn to use them for the Lord because the Lord will take us where it will work if we'll let him. You say, well, how come, Pastor, all these people I, I take and I, I go to their door and I give them these things, that a lot of them are, and I've heard most people are welcoming. But there may not be any salvations at the door. Let me tell you, you and our responsibility is to go. God takes over from there. And every one of these cards that you and I hand out about going to this site, and I handed some of these out down there at the revival last week. People have been asking me how to revival when it went well. Praise God. And uh, people down there is looking at these cards. And so we need to show people anything that will help bring them to Jesus. Give them any tool that we can have that will bring them to Jesus. You know, it's about time that we don't step back, but we step in to what God has for us. What do you think if Simon Peter had been on that shore? And Simon Peter said, Lord, I'm just too tired. I'm just too tired. We physically cannot do it. I guarantee you, God would have found somebody that could. And there's many of us today when God's asking us to do something, to step out of our comfort zone and do something we're not used to doing, we'll just tell God, well, God, I'm too tired. Oh, God, I just can't do it. Oh, folks, I want to tell you that should never be the answer. God who created you can give you the strength to do whatever he's called you to do. Simon Peter was obedient. And Simon Peter from that time walked out with God. And we see that not only did he go out fishing, but the boats were full. They had to call in the others to get all the catch there was. I want to tell you what a great time that was to rejoice in what God was doing. Folks, I want to tell you, you and I need to be able to rejoice in what God is doing at Stithen Baptist Church. And to do that, you and I got to get busy asking others. You and I got to get a little excited before we invite people, you know. Would you come to our church? I want to ask you. You know, Lord, uh, you know the Lord's really put it on my heart. And I'm going, you know, if you act like you're dead, chances are they'll want to bury you instead of spend time with you. It's time that we wake up and understand that we can say, no, you don't understand. You need to come to our church. God is moving. And I want the Spirit of God to move in you just like he's moving in me. And I want to share it with others. It's about time we understand that it's not about you. And it's not about us in here. It's about all those out there. But most of all, it's about Jesus Christ and bringing people to him. So praise God for Simon Peter. He said, Lord, I'm not even worthy to be around you. And he wasn't. For he was awestruck by the number of fish they had caught. As were the others with him. Listen. You might have done some things. Good English here. The way you've always done them. But when you hear the voice of God telling you to do it one more time. You better not stop. Because when God is in it. It makes all the difference in the world. And there's some things we do in churches. Let's just face it. Don't work as well as they used to. There's different people out there today. Let's go on. Verse 10 it says his partners James and John the sons of Zebedee were also amazed and Jesus replied to Simon don't be afraid. You know I want to tell you I believe God's telling all of us that today. Whatever the fear is that is a reason you won't do it the reason you won't tell people about Jesus the reason you won't knock on doors the reason you won't go out and Share the gospel. The reason you won't do whatever it is that God's calling you to do most of the time has to do with fear. And Jesus said, don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be fishing for people. I want to tell you when 
Christ forgave us of our sins and came into our heart. From that moment on, I believe God's call in our life and one of his calls in our life that we need to share him with others. I truly believe if the church, churches of today get this down, we'll see God's hand working in a mighty way. There's people that don't come because they haven't been asked. There's people that don't come because no one's loved them enough to care. There's people that don't come because they have preconceived ideas about church. And to tell you the truth, a lot of those preconceived ideas are true, unfortunately. But we need to understand it's a new day. When God is allowed to be who he is, not only in our lives, but in the life of our church and those around us. Don't be afraid. Whatever you're afraid of, take that out of your vocabulary. Take that out of your mind. Take it out of who you are and say, God, I'll trust you because I know you are the one that supplies my strength. Verse 11 said, and as soon as they landed, listen to this, they left everything. And follow Jesus. As soon as they landed, they left everything and followed Jesus. I don't know about you, but I'm afraid I might have been one that would have said, Wow, well, I got enough fish. I can take it easy for a few days. I'm going to go home and celebrate, and I'll get with you later. And folks, there's too many of us today that God has blessed our lives instead of us saying, God, thank you. I'm going to do whatever you ask me to do because your blessings are on me and I know it. Many of us say, thank you for the blessings. I'll see you later. Yeah. Folks, I want to tell you that is not who we're supposed to be in Christ. When God blesses us, you and I are supposed to praise him for blessing us and then we should forge forward. The problem with the church today, we're afraid of everything. We're afraid somebody's going to say something. We're afraid somebody's going to offend somebody. We're afraid that it's not going to come off right. We're afraid that God will not bless it. We're afraid of everything. And I want to tell you, I serve a God that I should not be afraid of anything. You see, we need to understand that God is not going to let us fail whenever we give him our lives and we serve him with our lives. He will not let us fail. We need to wake up and let God. I say this many times, but I think we ought to be able to grab those water pistols and storm the gates of hell and no Satan's going to be in retreat. It's about time we as a church understand that God is our strength. These guys, when they saw Christ and saw what he did for them, they didn't say, give me, give me, give me, Lord. They say, I want more of you, and they followed him. And not only did they follow him, they came witnesses for him. Why don't we do that today? You say, well, preacher, I come to church. Well, big deal. You say, preacher, you just said big deal about coming to church. No, it is a big deal to come to church. Don't get me wrong. But if you think that makes you everything in a bag of chips, you're wrong. All right? What we need is God's working in our hearts and our lives to the point that I'm willing to do whatever God has asked me to do. And these guys, after they went out and saw what God could do, they followed him. Now listen to what they left. They left everything. You and I many times aren't willing to leave anything. We need to put a check in our heart and ask God, to show us. You say, oh, pastor, you're surely not talking about us just giving up everything. Well, no, you all wouldn't be here next week if I asked that. Don't be silly. I'm asking us to be obedient to whatever the Holy Spirit shows us and tells us we ought to do. I'm asking us to be sensitive to the Word of God and sensitive to His Holy Spirit and do whatever He says we ought to be doing. I'm asking you to do whatever God tells you to do. You say, well, He doesn't tell me anything. Well, then you're not listening. He hadn't shown me anything. Well, you're not watching. He hadn't revealed anything. Let me just offer this. You've got to get busy for him. 
You know when they got the blessing? When they went back out in the water. You know when they got the blessing? When they're be in their obedience. They follow the will of God. If we want to see the U.S. turn around, I want to tell you Christians are going to have to get more serious about being obedient before a holy God. Christians are going to have to stand up a little more and say, no, that's not the way it is. This is what God's word says. And his word is true. I've got so many people anymore that want to have that erasable Bible, that tear the page out of your Bible, only take this, only take that, and not understand that every bit of this applies from cover to cover. Well, I just can't believe God would act that way or be that way. Well, let me tell you something. This is the way God is. You either accept it or you reject it. But I want to offer to you, you'll never see his blessings unless you're willing to do what he tells us to do. Get back in that boat. Get back out there and fish. God told him, I'm going to make you fishers of men. I'm going to make you fishers of people. You know, it's a little hard to catch fish if you never go to the water. It's a little hard to catch fish if you don't do what it takes to catch them. Say, preacher, what are you trying to say? It's very simple. We got to do whatever it takes to get people to Jesus. You know, I, I'm one of those guys, I'm not against bribing people to come to God's house. It doesn't matter to me as long as they come to God's house. We pastor churches, we gave gifts away every Sunday. We had events where we gave stuff away like crazy. And you know, some of them people got saved. They didn't come to get saved. They came to get something. But they got Jesus. You see, it doesn't matter how they get here. I've seen people that are in the mission field because they came to a meal. Because it was a meal and all they had to do was sit through church. I know two guys who were in the mission field for years. They're about ready to retire now, if they're not. They came to a spaghetti dinner at a church because they were single and they just wanted food. And they got Jesus. I want to tell you, whatever we do, we need to do to glorify the Lord. Whatever we do, we need to do to honor him. And, you, and I know so many people that say, well, you know, preacher, they really don't understand who we are. And they, they're lost for heaven's sakes. They don't understand anything about us. They act lost because they are lost. And what they need is Jesus. And what you and I need to do as a church today is reach out and show them Jesus in our lives first of all. And then invite them to be a part and do whatever it takes to get them into God's house. It all has to start with obedience. And if we want to see this church turn around, it has to start with obedience. If we want to see this country turn around, it has to start with obedience. Are you willing to do whatever God has called you to do today? Do you know him first of all as Lord and Savior of your life? If you don't, would you receive him today? I'm not talking about somebody just telling you how you're supposed to act. I'm talking about you coming to know Jesus. And let Jesus show you what needs to be done. When it comes to catching fish, we should be all about the fishing. But we need to let God clean them. We can learn from that. I want to ask you today, Stitham Baptist Church, will we become the church that God created us to be? And to do that, we have to become the people that God created us to be. We're going to have a time of invitation in just a moment. Do you know my Jesus? If you don't, would you receive him today? If you do know him, 
would you come today and say, Lord, I'm willing to do whatever you want me to. And you might be like Simon Peter and said, oh God, I'm not worthy. And none of us are. We have things messed up in our life no matter how good we try to be in front of everybody else. That needs to be given over to God so that God can use us the way he wants to. Are you willing to come today and just do whatever he's asking you to do in your life? I'm going to ask you to stand. I'm going to lead us in a word of prayer. And then I'm going to ask you just to come forward to receive Christ as Lord and Savior. To rededicate that life. To give your life over to God. Just to pray. To make this church your church home. Whatever God is leading you to do. Would you do it right now as we pray. Heavenly Father we thank you for your word today. Father I thank you for our country. Those that are willing to serve and die for this country. But Father, just as we were willing to serve and die for this country, we need to be willing to serve and die for you even more. So Father, today I pray that you would help us be obedient to you. To raise a great army of followers for you, Lord, that know you as Lord and Savior of their lives. Father, this old world might change to be what you really created her to be, Lord, and that's for us to honor and worship you. So, Father, I pray you bless this time of invitation today. Father, I pray as we start to sing, people would come and make things right with you. And these things we ask in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen.